ring one week on, but very different weather conditions today. Much cooler, one step softer tyres. How different did that make today's running? Um, it made it quite different. You saw also the, the lap times dropping quite quickly. I mean, I think we're a bit faster compared to last week. I think that's also because everybody just knows where to put the car. Um, but general, yeah, it was interesting, uh, especially the long runs, because that's going to be the weather probably that we'll find in the race. So uh, we collected good data and now it's about uh, time to analyze that and um, yeah, trying to figure out what we can do better for the race on Sunday. Explain that to, to the folks back at, at home because they will see you having raced here last weekend, all of that data. You come back this weekend and yet there's still so much to learn, still so much to understand. How much detail do you have to go into? How much can you change on, on this car? I mean, you can turn it upside down, really. Uh, that, that's how much we can change. Um, at the end, it's about trying to find, you know, the perfect limit and uh, compromise on everything. And uh, for us, obviously, yes, the car was good last weekend, but there's always potential to improve. You'll go to anybody in the paddock, they'll all say the same. Uh, so that's why it's so interesting to have two race weekends at the same place, because we're able to analyze what happened last week, try to extract the positives out of it, put it into this car and take other new stuff that we want to try and see if that also has a positive effect and then try and find the best compromise. Whereabouts do you think you are at the moment with that compromise? We've seen some great quality runs from you. I know it was it was looking really good last weekend, particularly until that, that slight little run up at, at turn one. Are you focused on Q2 or is it the race that's really the focus? Um, I mean, qualifying is obviously always a focus, uh, but definitely we want the car to be as good as possible in the race. And uh, I think that's what we're focusing on, trying to find and exploit everything we have uh, to try and be you know, able to fight with Alpha or Williams to be uh, you know, kind of building and, uh, and strengthening the skills that I have. Day out there, certainly that's how it looked from the times. Is that how it felt from within the cockpit? No, not really. Um, I mean, there is no difficult days and no easy days in the sport. You know, they're all uh, on some kind of level of demand and, and that's what we're here for. Um, but certainly we're using those trailer practices to experiment with the setup, you know, and then try and, you know, diverse both cars into something that could potentially give us a good gain as, you know, the free practices were reduced from last year. Um, so, yeah, we're just trying things and then going into tomorrow will be more equal and finalized, let's say. You told me last week that you were experimenting with different setups throughout the weekend and after qualifying you said tried a different one for all three practice sessions and ended up with the base setup for qualifying. Are the differences between the setups that you're trialing quite extreme or are they all within sort of a minutiae of one another? Yeah, I would say being truly honest, uh, they are rather extreme um, and they're quite frustrating because you know, with this car, um, I would say it's probably one of the most difficult aero packages that I've ever driven. Um, and the issue with the setups is that they don't really make sense uh, to what feedback they give. Um, and therefore, I'm quite lost um, in that respect because, you know, coming from junior formulas, more aero balance means more oversteer. But in F1, that definitely doesn't mean that, um, you know, it gives you know, different way the tires work during the lap and all sorts of things that affect the warm-up. Um, so I don't want to be too boring, but it's, yeah, it's uh, quite extreme and it's not very straightforward, let's say. What do you need then to, to get on top of that? Do you need to work with a baseline first and foremost before experimenting with different different setups? Um, well, I probably need a little bit of engineering classes because I've always gone with the approach that a driver does his job and the engineers do theirs. but. I think at the moment we speak a bit of a different language and uh, I'm going to study, uh, without joking, quite a few uh, details of that to understand how um, I can also advise the team on making the car better because I think the way it's working right now is not very promising.